sunglasses so that I can do Polaroid so I can see the bottom. And uh, that way you can see the rocks and the stuff that's in here. But today, look how muddy it is. Really bad conditions. But, hey, we fish when we can. We don't fish when it's perfect. If you try to, try to fish only when it's perfect, you'll never fish only. <laughs> so, on a day like this, what would I do? Probably fish streamers. And uh, hope that I get some, um, some fish. They won't be seeing the nymphs too well. They won't be seeing the wet flies and so forth that I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, first of all, you need to understand that about 90% of all of the food that a fish takes, a trout takes, is underwater. It's a subsurface uh, feeding thing for it. So it makes good sense to fish with things under the water unless there's something on top of the water floor. Now I'm very, very um, quick to switch over to dry flies if I see fish start, start, uh, bugs starting to hatch, but that isn't very often. Um, I know people who have, have fished for years and never seen a really good hatch. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those things. So by fishing under the water, your uh, percentage of catch will go up dramatically in those times when you don't see a, see a hatch situation. And it's still important to know what is happening in the water. I hope that all of you have one of these bug guides to Michigan waters. If you don't, you can, you can buy one from, uh, I think, George Flop. And uh, they will tell you about when the different hatches are going to occur and, uh, and the type of bug that will be hatching and the size of it and all the things that you really need to know. Now, this is a generalization about the bugs in Michigan because, like this year, they were early. We had an early spring. Everything was about up to two weeks before it normally happens. I tried to get back from Florida the last week of April to fish the, heck, uh, the uh, Henderson hatch, and it was already done. I couldn't find any Henderson. So uh, that's, that's the way it goes. Uh, normally, I would have been right at the peak of the Henderson hatch when I got back. So I'm going to talk to you about three different kinds of, of nymphs, wet flies, um, and um, how to fish them, what they look like, and um, the experience that I have with them. First, I'm going to um, show you wet flies. I have a wet fly on here. One of the favorites of my, one of my friends that's called Queen of the Water. It's a, it's a little slim thing. It looks like. Out of my desk. <clears throat> Here's a box of wet flies <clears throat> that, uh, that you can look at. The, we wonder sometimes what the wet fly really represents. Probably it represents more than anything else those life forms that have died and are floating in the water, just floating through the, the film. They can represent, though, a, a rising nymph, a nymph that is st starting to come up to the surface. And right about now, there's a lot of, of fish that are looking for rising nymphs, or rising uh, life forms. Um, the, um, matter of fact, they will be looking, well, maybe not today because of the height of the water, but normally they would be looking for uh, this time, pretty much the height of the Isonicia Sea. I'm going to show you some Isonicias later and, and how to fish them. But uh, since they are an insect that, that crawls out of the water, they don't take off from the water, they come up to the vegetation and, and climb out. The <coughs> nymph that is swimming up there and they'll gather by the hundreds right close to the shore. And uh, if you know that it's time for them, and you know that they're under the rocks, when you look under the rocks, you can have some spectacular fishing this time of year. So that happens to be what's happening right now. We're right at the end of another thing called uh, Stenonemus. There's still a few of those around. And as a matter of fact, some people told me that they saw a few sulfurs on the barbon here the other day. 
And that's way, way beyond when we should be seeing sulfur. But they're there. So that will fall generally into the guide that you get. It'll say sulfur from this date to this date. So we're running beyond that date that they, that they have. There. Now, these are very easy to fish. Um, this queen of the water, for example, uh, will go down in the water, in the water. We'll let them float along. And then the important place is when we start pulling them across the surface down at the end. So the, the fishing technique to use is to quarter downstream, quarter, cast quartering. Quarter means at this angle, 45 degrees down, down toward the uh, the uh, shore, and let it float down. Let it float down until it reaches the end. And then kind of pull back on it, pull back on it, pull back on it. <coughs> you can do the same thing this way. And what that's looking like now is like a rising mint. Very, very effective way to fish when there's caddis on the water. And you see caddis fuzzies and ones that bounce all over. And um, uh, during that period of time, they will take anything that is, that is rising in the water cover. Okay. But very simple. Uh, what I do in a stream this size, I don't attempt at all to make a back cast. I just give it a flick. I call it my little flick cast. And uh, you can, once, once you, what it really is is a modified roll cast. So you can pretty much, after a while, learn that when you're, wherever your tip goes is where it's going to go. Let it float down, let it swim across. Surface. Very, very effective way to fish. Um, and that particular fly that I'm fishing now um, is on the top of the ripple foam there, the top side. Uh, got an orange body. Um, very, very effective way to fish. Um, I'll take the next, no, the uh, next, second one in line, first one in line. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Gilly. You know what, here in Ireland now, he would be paid about uh, 50 shillings a day to handle my rods. Okay, I'm going to show you now my favorite way to fish. I, uh, with this little, little green nymp, I'll show you my uh, beadhead nymp box. Uh, my beadhead nymp box. Um, <laughs> he already has about 25 of already boxes. Has. He's, a, he's a box collector. He says I'm a I'm a new land box junkie. <laughs> and I appreciate the business. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to fish with now is a nymph. This the, there's many different kinds of nymphs. As you'll see in my beadhead box, and I've got another box of regular nymphs. Um, and um, uh, like I say, this is my favorite way to fish. I put on a, a dry fly of some kind. This particular one is a uh, Adams with a, with a foam post on the top. It floats very, very well. And I use that as a as a strike indicator. If the, if the fish pulls my nymph, which is on, on a piece of fluorocarbon, um, usually about one and a half times the depth of the water, the, the length that you put on tight, right onto the hooks of the other one, with any, any knot that you, that you use normally. And this will go down toward the bottom because it has a bead head that pulls it down. And this will float on the top. Now, the way I fish this... Tie it right to the hook. Yes, tie it right to the hook. So, uh, the way that I, um, that I fish this is I try to cover pretty much all of, of the fishable water. Now, there's places...